Hi everyone, my name is Jo, I'm a percussionist. Welcome to Sessions from the Shore, presented by Furthest from the Sea. I'm running three sessions all about rhythm, called Inside Out, A Rhythmic Journey. So this is the second of my videos. The first one was all about body percussion, so we were using our bodies to create rhythms. You might have realised already that this one is all about using objects from around the home. So before we start, make sure that you're not using anything that's breakable or anything that you can damage in any way. And also make sure you're not using anything that you can damage yourself with, so nothing sharp. And if you're using anything that belongs to anyone else, ask permission first. So have you got anything you could use as a drum? Now I'm sure lots of you have played pots and pans before, but have you really experimented with different sounds and rhythms? So what have I got down here? Here's a saucepan, wooden spoon. Okay, so if I hit it on the bottom, I get one sound. If I hit it just on the corner there, quite a different sound on the side. Okay, so have a little experiment with pots and pans and wooden spoons. What else have I got here? I've got a plastic bucket, so I can play this a bit like a, maybe a conga drum. So I'm holding it between my knees. You could also use the spoon or some kind of stick for this. Again, listening to different sounds. We've got the low sound in the middle. Different sound on the edge, on the side. Okay, what else have I got down here? How about a metal bin? Now this one actually works quite well on its side, like this. Okay, you could also play it this way, a bit like the other bucket as well. Uh, washing up bowl, how about that? Now then, I'm going to show you a different way of playing this. You could play it in the same way that we've just played the buckets and the pan maybe. Um, but also, you could play it a bit like an Irish baron. So, I'm holding the spoon a bit like I'd hold a pencil. There are other ways of holding it as well, but this is the way that I was first taught. And here we go, the bowl is on its side. Have a go at that one. What else? In fact, we could do a similar kind of thing with a box. Okay, so see what you can find, experiment with different sounds and also experiment with different ways of playing and then we'll get some rhythms going. Okay, I'm going to play a few different beats on a few different instruments here. Okay, so join in however you want to, you can play the same beat as me if you want or you can play another beat that fits. If you want to try some little fills, a bit like drum fills that we did in the last video, you could do that. So maybe play a regular beat for a little while and then do a little improvisation for a couple of beats. See how you get on with that. Okay, here we go. You stamp your feet if you want. 
one, two, smell. I thought I'd just give you one more drum suggestion. But this is just a cardboard box, but it is strong enough for me to sit on, just about. And it reminds me of a cajon. Now a cajon is a wooden box shaped drum that you sit on like this and you play the front of it. So you get the lower sounds towards the middle, the higher sounds at the edge. So maybe you'd like to keep an eye out for strong boxes that you can sit on and play, but be careful because most cardboard boxes are a bit too flimsy. object that I do play rather a lot. I'll give you a quick demonstration. Here we go. So the spoons that I've just been playing actually came from an antiques fair, but I've just had a look in my cutlery drawer and found some soup spoons that work pretty well as well. Okay, so these are quite nice because they're slightly rounded here um, and they, they don't dig into your fingers too much. Okay, so the way I'm holding them is I'm putting them back to back like this. And I'm putting my first finger in between the spoons, just past the first joint there. I've got my thumb along the top and then I've got three fingers underneath, like that. Okay, some people play with two fingers in between the spoons, so you might want to try with that as well. Okay, you do need a little gap between the spoons so that we get that sound. If you're not getting much of a gap, you might find you need to move your hand back along the spoons a little bit. Or if there's too much of a gap, move your hand forward a bit. Okay, so see if you can find a comfortable position with a little gap between the spoons. And then try tapping on your legs and your hands. I'm going to show you a couple of other pairs of spoons that I've got down here. Now these are plastic measuring spoons that I found in a kitchen shop. In fact, they, they come in a set of four, so they come in a set of four of different sizes. So you have to buy two sets to get the one pair of blue spoons. 
but they do actually work really well. They're quite gentle on your fingers and they've also got quite a nice deep bowl. Okay, so holding them exactly the same way. Just as an example, I've got those wooden spoons again from my kitchen. They don't work so well for playing, um, partly because they're rounded here, so they dig into my fingers a little bit, um, and they're flatter here, so I don't actually find them that easy to play. However, you might have some wooden ones in your kitchen that work really well, so maybe have a little look. I've also got some joined up spoons here. So these are homemade ones, just two soup spoons, and this is probably one for the adults. I've got a cork in between the end of the spoons. I've just cut off the top and the bottom, put some gaffer tape around, and then you've got your joined up spoons. Um, you do need to make sure again that you've got that gap between the spoons so you can get a sound, but it does save your finger a little bit. You can get joined up spoons ready made. These are wooden ones. And then some metal ones here as well. So once you've got your spoons in position, there are lots of different things you can do with them, lots of different techniques and rhythms. I'll just show you one or two things. So obviously you can play on your legs, from one leg to the other. You can play on your hands, maybe just get this kind of basic beat going to begin with, just to make sure you're feeling comfortable. You might find that the spoons come apart a little bit to start with, that's completely normal. You might need to just push down a little bit more with the thumb on the top or grip a bit tighter with the fingers underneath if that's happening. You can play between your leg and your hand, like this. Have a go at that. Down, up. See if you can keep your top hand fairly still, so it's mostly the spoons that are moving. You can also go from one leg to the other if you want to. Go really fast. How about a little drum roll down our fingers? So if you spread the fingers on the other hand, so they're quite wide apart if you can, quite stiff, put that hand over your leg so it's a bit like a funny shaped ladder, point the spoons at your fingers and very gently run down your fingers and land on your leg at the bottom. So have a go at that. If it's not working, maybe these fingers aren't stiff enough or they're not apart. Or maybe you're pushing too hard with your spoons. You don't need to push hard, it's really gentle. Might just take a little bit of practice. Once you've got that, maybe you could do that other rhythm with the roll at the beginning. So we do roll across and up. So one, two, three. And one, two. Well done.
Now I'm guessing some of you have probably already had a go at making your own shakers at some point with plastic bottles or tubs and uh, putting various different things in. But have you tried shaking them in different ways? And have you tried putting different things inside to get different sounds? So I've got four tubs here with all different things in. This one's got pasta. Quite a lot of pasta. This one's got a bit of rice. And actually, if you kind of swirl this one around, it sounds a little bit like the sea, so you can get different sounds with it. What else have I got? I've got one with lentils in it. It might be an idea to put some tape around them so the lentils or whatever you've got in there doesn't spill out, just like mine did a couple of minutes ago. And then this one's got plastic bottle tops in. choose the lentil one for now and we're going to see if we can actually get a really nice beat going okay so moving from your elbow shake it backwards and forwards and you might want to stamp the feet on the beat You can also turn it, so sometimes you get a different sound when you turn it around. Maybe it will work upright. Try it. Very different sound, isn't it? You know what, we could use them a bit like a rock tambourine as well. So if we hold it sideways again. Now then, we could play a drum with one hand. Let's go for our bucket drum. And I'll shake her with another. So let's get our beat going. Here we go. shakers.
that was close. for joining me. I hope you haven't created too much chaos around you. Remember that everything in these videos is just about giving you ideas, okay, so just about listening to sounds around you and seeing if you can create your own music from objects around. So you don't have to be doing exactly what I'm doing, it's just inspiration hopefully. So the next session I'm going to be doing, or the last session, is going to be outside, so a similar kind of thing but outdoors. Remember there are other sessions going on too, so there's art with Abby, tap dancing with Becky and writing with Carnage. So check out the Furthest From The Sea Facebook page for all of those as well. And do send in your videos and photos and comments, uh, we'd really love to know how you're getting on. Okay, I'll see you next time, bye! <laughs>